This podcast is supported by Capital Credit Union. With Capital Credit Union, there are no fees or charges on your account. You can join and apply for a loan on the same day. There's no penalty fee on early repayment of a loan. You can avail of flexible repayment terms. And all of this is because Capital Credit Union is a financial cooperative owned by its members. And Capital Credit Union actively supports its community through donations and sponsorships. And we here in DBS would like to thank Capital Credit Union for their sponsorship of the DBS Finance and Tech Week 2021. Money mules are effectively people who help criminals launder millions of euro worth of dirty money by letting them use their bank accounts. Today, Gardaí have warned that children as young as 15 are involved. Across social media, glamorous looking accounts offering get rich quick schemes. Criminals are using innocent people to move stolen money. Recently, across Ireland and throughout the world, there has been a fairly significant spate of students appearing in court for money laundering. Now, you might think money laundering only involves people that are massively involved in drug or organised crime arrangements, but listen on and I will try to explain to you why ordinary students are getting involved in it and how to spot what it is and how to avoid it. Hi everybody, my name is Richard O'Callaghan and I am currently the course director for accounting and finance with Dublin Business School. So why I am going to talk about this area today, number one is actually because it's interesting and number two is because it's something that literally anybody has the potential to get tied up in. Before coming to work for Dublin Business School, I've held many roles, including in the public service, where I was a member of the Special Investigation Unit in the Department of Social Protection. I was also the CEO of an accountancy body for eight years and money laundering and appropriate practices with respect to money laundering was actually a key focus of what we did. And I'm also a certified fraud examiner and certified information systems auditor. And I have a very strong interest in that regulatory and AML function within organizations. So as a student in Dublin Business School, you might be asking yourself, well, what has money laundering got to do with me? Actually, quite a lot, because one of the ways that money launderers have been operating in the last few years in Ireland and elsewhere throughout the world has actually been targeting students who may be looking for cash quite quickly, actually targeting them to try to get them to allow their accounts to be used. And these money launderers are offering relatively small amounts of money to students and getting them to allow access to their bank accounts so they can move money through those bank accounts. And anybody that allows a criminal to do that is often referred to as a money mule. Here's Detective Inspector Katharina Gunn of the Garden National Economic Crime Bureau to explain a little more about money mules. A money mule transfers money illegally on behalf of other people. They may or may not be aware that this is a crime. However, they are complicit if they recklessly allow their bank account to be used to launder the proceeds of crime. So money laundering is nothing new. It's been around for many years and it is the age-old problem that criminals have, which is how do I move my money around and try to make it look legitimate without getting caught by the authorities? To do this, organised criminals put together ever more elaborate and sophisticated schemes to move money through bank accounts, to move it through apparent legitimate businesses and overall do anything else that they think might be suitable methods to launder their proceeds of crime. To try and make hot money look legitimate, they will execute a range of schemes, including trying to get people to allow access to their bank accounts, which is what we're talking about in this particular circumstance, but also they might try and get involved in legitimate businesses. They may also try to entice people to do things like give them access to their winning lottery ticket so that they can exchange that for clean money. All of these things are reported to be approaches that organised crime have tried over the years to try and legitimise their money. And all of this is considered such a major threat both nationally and internationally that a whole suite of laws have been brought in throughout the world and there's been huge international cooperation on the matter. So 
the money launderers are always trying to find new ways of moving their money around and trying to make it legitimate because the authorities are always detecting what they're doing and following up on it. One of the most recent developments in this area has been the recruitment of students as money mules. In this clip, Detective Superintendent Michael Crin, again of the Garda National Economic Crime Bureau, explains how serious it is to get caught up in organised crime as a money mule. International criminal organisations are behind this, and this money is then moved abroad. It is used to finance terrorism, it's used to finance trafficking in people, smuggling, drugs trafficking. That is where the money goes to. It's not a harmless, victimless crime. A money mule is anybody that allows their personal bank account to be used in the process of money laundering. Warnings that this type of activity was going on, particularly among young adults and students, first started to make waves in 2018. According to the Banking and Payments Federation in Ireland, Irish banks had reported more than 1,600 money mule cases during that year. And according to a report from RTE, Many of the people involved as money mules were young people. The Banking and Payments Federation says 98% of money mules are aged between 18 and 24. They are targeted by fraudsters in schools, colleges and online. The penalty, if convicted, could have lifelong consequences. If they're asking you to use your bank account, they're asking you to be a money mule. If you're a money mule, you're involved in money laundering and if you're money laundering, you're involved in criminal activity. The problem is very often young people have no idea of what they're getting entangled in. They don't realise that they're getting involved in criminal behaviour and they don't realise the consequences of it on their life. Banking institutions had reported more than 1,600 suspected money muling cases to the authorities during 2018, with reports on individual court cases starting to appear in the newspapers during 2020 and 2021. A report in the Irish Independent earlier this year included information on a long-running investigation, has identified 90 suspects throughout Ireland, and they are satisfied at this stage that €10 million Euro has been moved as proceeds of a fraud that were being moved around different bank accounts, including student bank accounts, with just one young man being suspected of laundering over €500,000 in criminal proceeds. So you might think you won't get caught up in something like this. However, being recruited as a money mule often starts off looking like recruitment to a normal job. Firstly, the criminal makes contact with the victim, usually through Instagram, where they promise a quick cash trading deal. Then, they send over a large amount of cash, usually anything up to 10 grand. Finally, the money is withdrawn in cash and given to the fraudster, with the victim keeping a cut. The highest percentage of money mules we see are around the 17 to 25 age bracket, so obviously a lot of that will include some university students as well. I think students are quite a prime target for this kind of crime because they're moving away from home maybe for the first time, they have less money and to get an extra few pounds so that they can spend it on some material goods is actually really appealing. This report, produced by NatWest in the UK, outlines not only the motivation of somebody who decides to become a money mule, but also explains how the recruitment process is undertaken. The report includes an interview with a university student, Rachel, and it discusses how she ends up as a money mule. How did this all start? How did the conversation start? It was pretty soon into the first term of second year at uni. I ended up complaining about how broke I was to my coursework group and one of them started chatting about how they'd made a couple of hundred quid by signing up to this online trading scheme on Insta so I messaged the guy that he did it with. All I needed to do was to hold the money for a day or two then withdraw it from my local bank branch keeping a bit for myself before giving the rest to his colleague by the end of the day, uh, five grand had been deposited into my account. Two days later, I withdrew £4,400 in cash from my account at my local branch. Before meeting the man who I was, I was instructed to give the money to. A few weeks later, I found my bank card had been shut down. It was really uh, humiliating because suddenly I had to tell my parents why I couldn't get a student loan anymore 
I couldn't even transfer money and get my friends to take it out for me. A year or so later, I was in my final year at uni. I received a call from the police asking to speak to me. I knew exactly what they were going to say. I wish I'd never done it. So as you can hear from Rachel there, often the opportunity to become involved in money muling is actually presented as a legitimate job opportunity or may even come from somebody that you trust. They may also be offered to you at a time when you are particularly vulnerable. So for example, if you're having financial difficulty or you've just arrived in the country, you may find that it's that exact moment that somebody will present you with what will turn out to be a money muling opportunity. So what are the warning signs that you should look out for? According to Europol, signs that something could be a money mule opportunity include unsolicited contacts promising easy money, job adverts from overseas companies seeking local or national agents to act on their behalf, poor sentence structure with grammar and mistakes within advertisements, or where the sender's email address is a standard web-based service such as Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, etc. and they don't match the actual company name. You may not be required to have any experience or education to take on the role, And most of the interaction is going to be via the internet. But the most significant indicator that this could be a money mule scheme would be where you are asked to use your bank account as part of your role. That should immediately be something that triggers serious concerns for you. Those are the kinds of things to look out for if you are considering taking up an opportunity that's been offered to you. So how can you prevent this issue arising for you? Well, first and foremost, any offer that you have from a company or individual, you should research that person or individual to make sure that they are legitimate. Don't provide your bank account to anyone unless you know and trust them implicitly and decline any easy money offers. If it sounds too good to be true, then it is. If you're being paid to do nothing, then what you're actually doing is taking huge risks with your future. That's what you're being paid for. The main message is that somebody offers you money to allow a substantial amount of money to go through your account, whether you're a student, whether you're a low-paid worker, whether you're stuck for money, are you involved in a romance scam that you don't really know you're in a scam yet, please don't allow anybody to use your bank account because at the end of the day, if we come along and figure out that you've allowed the criminal network to put money through your account, you are in difficulty. A file will be going to the Director of Public Prosecutions and you run the risk of being prosecuted. And not only that, you will have difficulty travelling if you get a conviction for money laundering. That was Detective Sergeant Matt Sheridan explaining some of the risks that you take if you end up as a money mule in a money laundering scheme. But a criminal conviction and difficulty travelling is just a small part of what can happen to you if you end up being convicted of money laundering. You will probably find it extremely difficult to get work in accounting, finance, banking or the law, where you often have to be a person of good repute, i.e. not been in trouble before, in order to qualify to be part of those professions. You may also find it very difficult to get new bank accounts open. And indeed, you might find that your current bank accounts all get shut by the banks because they don't want to take any risk with you. As Detective Sergeant Sheridan mentioned already, it could hit you for travelling and that would be travelling both for pleasure and also for work. You may find yourself refused entry to a country where you have the possibility of getting a job because you have a conviction for being a money mill. Ultimately, this is a very serious issue for you. You are tying yourself in with organised crime and with terrorism by being involved in this. And as you can imagine, many countries take that very seriously. And so it's not going to be something that could be a short term issue for you. It's actually that could be an issue for you for the rest of your life. It could even involve you not being able to get a phone contract. So what do you do if you think you're currently acting as a money mule? Before I get into that, I just want to add a disclaimer here. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not offering legal advice here. So my main advice would actually be to go and get proper legal advice on the matter. Nothing that I've said in this podcast should be seen as legal advice or interpreted as legal advice because it absolutely isn't. So as I just said, the main advice I give to you is get legal advice. If you have your own legal advisor already, that's great. If you don't, then you may be able to get legal advice from one of the free legal advice centers. You can find out where they're located by going onto their website, which is www.flac.ie. And they're often referred to as FLAC. So FLAC.ie. They also have a telephone helpline and you can get that at plus 353 1906 1010. 
and they offer advice on that helpline, but may also be able to put you in contact with a solicitor who can give you more advice on the particular area. You will also end up informing your bank and informing Angarda Shiakana about the issue, but I strongly encourage you to consider getting proper legal advice as you are in a very serious situation if you are caught up in one of these schemes. Now, what if it's already too late and the authorities are involved? So you've been contacted by Angarda Shiakana with respect to something that you've done. Well, at that stage, the main thing you can do is to know your rights. So firstly, as I said already, get some legal advice. You can actually access a couple of good sources of information with respect to what you should do when you are actually arrested and know your rights. The Irish Council for Civil Liberties, ICCL, on their website www.iccl.ie have a PDF document called Know Your Rights and that actually takes you down through what your rights are if you are arrested and that's the main thing I would point you to. I'd encourage you to download and read that document now as it provides you with some information that it's no good trying to find out once you've actually been arrested. The other thing that's very likely to happen to you if you are subject to one of these reviews is that you could be subject to a search warrant. Home or even your workplace could be subject to a search warrant. All I've said about getting legal advice remains exactly the same if it comes to a search warrant. But bear in mind that it's unlikely you would be able to stop a search at the point a search warrant is served on you. The Guardi are fully within their rights to search the premises once they've served that search warrant. So I'm going to finish off this podcast with the story from one more student who found herself part of a money mule scam and told the BBC about her experiences. But before I do, I would just like to again thank Capital Credit Union for their sponsorship of the Finance and Tech Week 2021 in Dublin Business School. Thanks to everybody who listened and I hope you got something from they this. approach you with this like amazing like story oh like oh i have this money with me and i just need to put in, in an account for a while or, or i wanted to buy something could you hold this money for me and in return i'll give you like 30 or 40 percent and as a student you think oh wow like okay if i just have to put this money in my account and then get a cut out of it but you don't ask questions you don't think oh yeah this is probably from like this grand scheme of like drug dealing or whatever so what you usually do is like you put the money in your account and um you um, keep it there until they ask you to transfer it out somewhere else. But they don't warn you about what happens like the, when the bank sees a large sum of money come into your account. Mm. So usually it's very, I wouldn't say it's innocent, but it's taken, they don't tell you what the consequences are. It's like glorified to an extent. Usually it comes over social media or it's a friend of a friend and they, t they say, I've done it before, it's, it's, nothing, it's nothing wrong with it, nothing happens to you. Mm. Usually people in the, in, the, in the time, people don't ask questions because they think it's a big sum of money. Nothing's going to happen to me because it's not a direct transfer or it's me putting the money into my own account so they won't question it.